May 1796. After victory in the Battle of Lodi, Bonaparte triumphantly entered Milan. These days, the three-color flag was flying over the capital of Lombardy. The French army also controlled Pavia, Cremona, and the main crossings of the river Adda. In this situation, General Beaulieu had to retreat again. This time, he retreated toward the Mincio River to a good defensive position, which was covered from the south by a powerful Mantua fortress and from the north by Lake Garda. For the Austrians, it was the last stance of defense in northern Italy. However, Bonaparte wasn't in a hurry to attack the Austrians in their defensive position. Before launching the new offensive, he decided to rest his troops. Also, during the retreat, the Austrians left a 2,000 large garrison in the fortress of Milan, which the French had to block. The offensive on Beaulieu was planned for May 22nd. However, Bonaparte's plans were suddenly on the verge of collapse. A dispatch came from Paris, the content of which might not only ruin the entire campaign, but also destroy Bonaparte's military career. The directory members informed Bonaparte that the Italian army would be divided into two independent armies. Bonaparte's first army would attack Rome because then Pope Pius VI was considered the main ideological enemy of the French Revolution and its principles. And the second army, commanded by General Kellerman, would hold Lombardy. For Bonaparte, it was obvious that such a plan would ruin the entire campaign. Moreover, he considered it critically unacceptable to divide the army, which faced a not yet defeated enemy and was expecting large reinforcements very soon. Bonaparte immediately replied to the directory. Kellerman will indeed command the army as well as me, but I believe that uniting Kellerman and me in Italy would mean losing everything. I will not be able to serve the army with a man who considers himself the first general in Europe. Also, I believe one bad commander is better than two good ones. War, the same as management, is a matter of tactfulness. In addition to these words, Bonaparte wrote that he would be forced to resign if the government decides not to change its plans. And this answer made the right impression in Paris. Bonaparte's glory was high, so his resignation could lead to unrest and dangerous consequences for the government. Eventually, the members of the directory decided not to take the risk. The directory thoroughly discussed the issue and solved it positively. Your plan is the only correct one, which should be followed. Eternal glory to the winner of the Battle of Lodi. Thus, Bonaparte received what he wanted. He remained the only army commander on the Italian front and received the freedom of action. Moreover, his army finally received much anticipated reinforcement, so Bonaparte actively prepared for a new attack. Thanks to the reinforcements, Bonaparte strengthened three main divisions and formed a new fourth division headed by General Kielmain. Another supportive division covered rearward and blocked the Austrian garrison which set up a defense in the Milan fortress. In addition to army reorganization, Bonaparte continued to pay much attention to the soldiers' provisions because they still faced significant hardships and needed many things. This frequently led to lower morale and was the main reason for looting. However, this issue was decided promptly and effectively. Bonaparte forced the Dukes of Modena and Toscana to pay significant contributions. Thanks to these measures, the soldiers, for the first time in three years, started receiving their wages in specie. It was an unbelievable occurrence for the army and a very generous gift to soldiers. From the memories of the captain of the 32nd Infantry Regiment, when I saw my 60 francs, I felt like a rich man. On May 20th, the main preparations were finished and the troops received the order to concentrate on the Adda River. Bonaparte planned to attack with four divisions. In total, he was able to concentrate 32,000 soldiers for this attack. By that time, the Austrians also received reinforcements, and General Beaulieu had 28,000 soldiers. On May 22nd, 
Bonaparte started his all-out offensive. However, something unexpected happened again. As soon as his troops started moving, very concerning news arrived from Pavia. In this city, the residents instigated by the Austrian agents started a rebellion. There was also a tense situation in Milan. As a result, all army communications were in danger. Under these circumstances, the offensive was impossible and Bonaparte immediately returned to Milan. Order in the city was restored promptly and effortlessly. However, the situation in Pavia was significantly worse. The rebellious citizens started to kill the French soldiers. There was a true uprising in the city and the French garrison quartered in Pavia had to surrender. In response, Bonaparte ordered troops to Pavia immediately. In such a situation, Bonaparte decided to teach everyone a harsh lesson so as to prevent similar revolts in the future. On May 26, 2,000 soldiers approached the city gates. The French offered the revolters an option to lay down their weapons and surrender, but they refused. So the French troops crashed the gates and broke into the city in an assault which lasted a few hours. As a result, many participants in the revolt were shot and the city was looted. After such harsh measures, order in Pavia was restored and Bonaparte went to Brescia to command the continuing attack. The French troops continued to advance at a quick pace. By this time, Kielmain's division reached Monticiari. Angero was approaching Lonato. The division of Serrulier was moving further south. The Austrian troops were standing in the defense position behind the Minchio River. This river had four bridges, but General Beaulieu decided to defend, not destroy them. In this position, Beaulieu worried most for the right flank, because if the French broke in near Peschieda, the retreat routes to the north would be blocked and retreating to Tyrol would be impossible. Because of that, Beaulieu concentrated 4,000 General Liptai soldiers near Peschieda, which was supported by the reserves of Milas. The left flank was covered by Fortress Mantua. The central bridges near Borghetto and Goito were guarded by 8,000 of General Sebatendorf's soldiers. On May 29th, Bonaparte started to concentrate forces near Peschieda. These maneuvers had convinced the Austrians even more that the French would try to break in from the north. However, the Austrians' situation was complicated by the fact that General Beaulieu got sick that day and was practically unable to command his troops. Therefore, confusion increased in the Austrian headquarters and the cooperation among the troops worsened. Finally, on May 30th, in the early morning, the division of General Angereau started to approach Peschieda. The Austrians had already prepared for the battle on the right flank, but Bonaparte, to everyone's surprise, suddenly attacked Borghetto. At 9 a.m., the Kielmaid's division rapidly attacked the Austrians in this position. Again, French grenadiers were on the verge of this attack, attacking with incredible courage and decisiveness. In this battle, Brigadier General Gardon was distinguished particularly. He headed the squad of the Grenadiers and was the first to burst onto the opposite bank. After intense hand-to-hand -hand combat, the French moved the Austrians back and took control of the bridge. At this time, the division of Angereau was attacking the right flank of the Austrians. Massena received the order to support the attack on Borghetto immediately. Having learned of the French breakthrough, General Sabatendorf counterattacked with the available reserves, but to no success. Massena's troops approached Borghetto, entered the battle, and pushed the Austrians back to Villafranca. Thus, the Austrian defense was broken down just in a matter of several hours. In this situation, General Beaulieu was again discouraged and completely lost hope for success. Eventually, not thinking too long, he ordered his troops to retreat. The main part of the Austrian army retreated north. To cover the retreat, General Beaulieu moved all available reserves to hold Peschieda and Villafranca. 
the remaining Austrian army, which was on the left flank, received the order to retreat to Fortress Mantua and join the local garrison. On the evening of May 30th, the Austrian army retreated from all of its positions on the Minchio River. On this day, the Austrians suffered 600 dead or wounded. The French lost around 500 men. The next day, Bonaparte ordered Massonade's division to move to Verona, while he, together with the divisions of Serrulier and Augereau, moved toward Mantua. On June 1st, Bonaparte sent a message to Paris telling about another victory. The Austrians were completely expelled from Italy. Our outposts are located in the mountains of Tyrol. I will not name every soldier who revealed himself on this day, but I can tell you that all of the grenadiers of the vanguard are now covered with glory. They are simply mocking death. Nothing compares to their fearlessness. Thus, Bonaparte completely defeated General Beaulieu, not leaving him a single chance. But now he had a new task. He had to seize the very powerful fortress of Mantua, which had 13,000 Austrian soldiers in garrison. Also, this fortress had 315 cannons, 300 tons of powder, and a huge stock of food. It was impossible to walk by Mantua. Additionally, he had to deal with this issue as soon as possible because no one doubted that the Austrians would return with renewed vigor very soon.